Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, where we like looking at budget knives, and especially ones that are at a very good price. This is the Catalyst by American Buffalo Knife and Tool Company, which is based, I think it's in Tennessee actually, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's a family operation. The knives, yes, they're made in the United States, in the China, I should say. They're designed in the United States and it's an American company. They just have their knives made at a Chinese knife factory, and we all know that Chinese knife factories can make some pretty good knives. This is D2 G10. It comes in this tan with black wash, or you can get it black with black wash, or this uh, OD green with black wash. I got mine from White Mountain Knives. You got thumb studs, you got a flipper. Very, very nice. My coupon code for White Mountain Knives is CCE. So whenever you shop at uh, White Mountain Knives, make sure you use that coupon code on whatever you buy. If at checkout it says that the code couldn't work, that's because it's an item that the manufacturer says is not allowed to have discounts. In that case, once you've finished the transaction, just email White Mountain Knives back again, tell them, that you're a viewer of Canadian Cutting Edge and you'd like the 10% discount on that item. And they'll refund you the discount value. So there you go. We've got a fairly thin handle, nice blade, good shape, useful for a lot of things. I think you might be curious to see the review, so stick around. So here it is. Let's do that size comparison with the Ontario Rat like I usually do. I oh should have had the camera a little bit higher, eh? But let's do the blade comparison first then. Uh, bring the tips together. We've got more of a cutting edge on this than we have on the Ontario Rat. Line up those pivot pins. The grip starts in very much the same spot. Let's move this back here. And so the handle, the grip is less. So more blade, less grip. It's thinner as well. So I really like a knife that has these kinds of proportions. It's not very heavy. It's lightweight in the pocket, uh, especially good for summertime if you're wearing like linen shorts, like light fabric. It's a great knife for that. Stone wash. Anti-reflective, which I quite like. We've got a drop point with a swedge along there and then a nice saber grind here. The sharpness trial, quite well done. I like that the bevel follows the handle right there. So the handle is coming back at an angle. So the plunge there for the bevel, it follows that line as well. Very good. The only thing I don't like on this side of the blade, other than how they sharpened it, but we'll talk about that later, is this large D2 sitting there. I would much prefer it to be smaller and then maybe hidden on the ricasso here between the handle and the plunge or up here behind the thumb studs. The thumb studs themselves, they're quite well done. You've got three steps right at the very end of it. So it's very easy to get a good grip on there to cause the blade to come flying out. Either hand works very well. And it's got a flipper. There's no jipping on the flipper, but uh, perhaps some would come in handy. Light switch method, uh, pulling back just on a slight angle, that works as well. So it's got a fairly large flipper for the knife. I wouldn't have minded if they would have made it just a little bit shorter, standing off the handle just a little bit less. But then again, you've got a little bit more of a guard that way, so that if you do a reverse grip, you've got a little bit more protection. You know, if you plunge into something and it comes to a sudden stop, you don't want your hand coming over the cutting edge, right? So not terrible. Quite well done for almost everything on the blade. The design of the blade, the shape of the blade, all that stuff is good. The sharpening of the blade is pretty terrible. They did get the edge sharp, but the sharpening, ugh. We've got a liner lock. Lock up here is almost exactly what I like on a brand new knife. It's fully engaged and there's lots of room for wear. The detent ball is perfect. It uh, 
holds the blade in. If I just hold the handle and do a hard shake, the blade does not come out, which uh, is what you want to have, especially in Canada. Because if the blade comes out too easily, they call that a centrifugal knife down here, and then they confiscate it. We've got very, very mild jimping on the spine of the blade. Almost, it's almost like it isn't there. It really is not helping very much. But the jimping on the thumb rest area, on the handle scales, pretty good. On the liners as well, you really get a good grip in there with your thumb. But if you just relied on it up here, not so much. The only other jimping on the knife is a little bit, you know, sort of like jimping on the liner lock release. There's just enough of a cutaway of the liner and ha handle scale here, the G10, to get your thumb in there. I never had an issue where I wanted to open the blade and I couldn't. It just worked every single time. So that's a really good thing, and it's not aggressive enough to, you know, become an irritant when you're holding the knife. The handle scales, because they're so thin, it is a little bit um, on the small side for somebody with my size hands. I wouldn't mind it to be just a little bit thicker, but a lot of people are going to like it this thin. And, you know, sometimes I just want a knife that is thinner in the handle. So, you know, this one hits those kinds of points. We've got that bend on the back here. It helps it to fill in the palm right there very well. The edges are all chamfered, nicely done. This G10 feels a little cheap. It almost feels like FRN, but you know they say it's G10 and it, it does look like G10. And when I took it apart, it is it is G10. It's just a little bit, um, I don't know if the resin they used in there is, I'm sure the resin is different. Not all G10s are gonna be exactly the same. So there's that. The texture on here is pretty good for a little extra grip. You can hear the texture and I slide my nail on it. We've got a backspacer that is partway through. I, and when I take it apart, I'll show you a little later, there is a screw right through here in the body. So we've got a pivot screw and a tail screw, but there's also a screw right there where that bend happens. So a little bit of a um, you know, swelling in the middle of the handle and then it comes back down and up again just at the tail. Very comfortable in a reverse grip and uh, you know, regular fist grip, saber grip. The knife is just comfortable. I think especially for people who are uh, men's medium, men's large hand sizes, you're going to really like how this knife feels in the hand. At least I think you will. We've got a right and left pocket clip. It's a decent pocket clip. It's not one of the super deep carry ones, but uh, it's very easy to put on the left side. They've got a cutaway right there. And they've got larger screws. These are T8 on both sides. They're not free spinning. So quite good. It's a decent knife. Let's uh, take a look at this thing taken apart. Here I've taken the one scale off. These screws are actually quite big. And so they're very good. I've had some screws from American Buffalo Knife and Tool that haven't been that good, but these are T8, both front and back. D-shaped collar here, so this side won't turn, so don't try too hard. Uh, this side is the side that came out, but I can't guarantee that yours will be the same way on uh, which way they put the pivot pin in. This is also a D-shaped pin that won't spin along either, so that's pretty good. Let's take this off here. This is my first time taking this apart. Oh, there's another screw right there. I should have seen that before. That's going to be a T6, I bet. Yep. Yeah. There we go. We've got small uh, steel ball bearings in here. Decent construction. Nicely lubed in there. 
nothing wrong with the way this thing's built. Unless you want a lanyard. You could tie a lanyard around this. You know, it looks a bit like a pulley. But uh, the tip of the blade's going to get too close when you go to close the knife. Well, I'll put it back together now. And now it's time to go through all the dimension sizes, specs, that kind of stuff. 99 grams. 3.55 ounces. Not bad. Three and a half ounce blade. Factory edge sharpness uh, about a third of the way up from the heel. 130 bess, which is quite good. It's a little tiny bit better than average. The uh, blade length and the cutting edge length are basically identical, so I'm going to say they're the same. 87 millimeters, 3.425 inches, so just under three and a half inches. The thickness of the blade at the flat section is 2.68 millimeters. That's 0 0.1055 of an inch, so a little bit under an eighth. The blade depth, this way it's biggest just before the heel of the blade, and that is 25.3 millimeters, 0.996 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, again about a third of the way up from the heel of the blade, 0.53 millimeters, 20.5 thousandths of an inch. So that's not bad. The grind angles. The grind angles are a right mess. This one here, right at the very end, it just increases tremendously. It's about 25 degrees, but then less than an eighth of an inch into it, we're down at about 19 and a half degrees. And about an inch in, it's about 16.7 degrees. And by a third of the way along, it's down to 15 degrees, 14 degrees, and then back to 16.1 or whatever degrees. So quite the variability on this side. So I'm going to call this 15 degrees because that's what it is pretty much in the middle. This side, I'm going to call 27 degrees because it's about 27 degrees right in the middle, but it gets worse. It's about 35 degrees near the tip and then, you know, 30 and then about 27 degrees halfway along. And then by the end here at the heel, it's 22.3 degrees. So whoever was at the factory sharpening this knife needs retraining. Thankfully, D2 steel is pretty good. I would sharpen this somewhere between 18 to 20 degrees. Probably 18 degrees per side would be a good thing. The only thing is I wouldn't be able to sharpen the very last little bit for a while because to try to get it sharp right to the very heel, I'd have to remove an awful lot of steel and I want to save steel. So uh, I, I have a little bit of a video where I move the knife up and down this way and you can look at the edge and see how much of a transition of the angle that is. I'll do that right here. Look at the light right here. See how it gets dark? That means the angle's changing and it just follows all the way along. So it's fairly consistent along here and then the angle changes dramatically right at the end. The other side's pretty much the same but not quite as bad. Okay, so that's the grind angles and stuff. Talk about the handle now. The handle length, it is 115 millimeters, which is 4.527 of an inch. The grip area, it's right around nine and a half centimeters, about three and three quarter inches. A decent size grip in there. The thickness of the handle just on the G10, 11.1 millimeters, 0.437. So well under half an inch. The handle depth within the grip area, it's largest right there, 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch. And when the knife is closed, it's biggest right up here at the flipper, 33.4 millimeters, 1.315 inches. And the total length of this knife is so close to 202 millimeters that that's what I'm going to say, which is 7.953. So we've got basically an eight inch knife. It's a pretty good knife. I didn't demonstrate the use of the pocket clip yet. I'll show you that. I like the clip. Even though it doesn't flatten out, it wants to climb on and then you push it in and it just goes all the way to the bottom, just like it should. You've got a little bit of the knife sticking out. Let's move it right to the end here. Not too bad. 
the finish is sort of uh, a satin finish. You know, it's not matte, it's not gloss, it's in between. Same with the screws. So not bad. I think the green one or the black one, they're all going to look very much the same in the pocket. And uh, the texture of the G10 being squeezed underneath the pocket clip does make it a little bit harder to pull out than some knives. So what do I think of this knife overall? I like the design. The design's quite good. The execution, for the most part, it's good. I like using thumb studs. I'm a thumb stud fan. I prefer thumb studs and right or left-handed. That's one of, one of my ways I like knives the most. But the flipper works well as, as well. The uh, lockup is good. Solid and you know, good spot on the lockup. The blade centering, it's just a little bit off. If I loosen up the pivot pin just a little bit, it can be centered, but then there's going to be a little bit of blade play. So right now there's no blade play and it's a little bit to the pocket clip side, but not near rubbing. So I don't mind, especially on a knife at this price range. Like I told you, $38.99, you take off 10%, that makes it Whatever, I'll have it on the screen what the right number is. But $39 US for this knife and you take off 10%. That's pretty good. I'll have the Canadian price on the screen as well. I don't know if uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool Knives are easy to get in Europe or not. But if you can get it and it's a style of knife that you can have in your jurisdiction and you'd like something light, pretty quick, uh, decent at piercing, Decent at slicing, doesn't really excel at either, but pretty good. And uh, you know, it shows wear already. I've already got you know a little bit of shiny right there, so some of the black anodizations come off on the thumb stud, and um, rubbing it in a few places. You know, it's showing a tiny bit of wear, but it is a budget knife. I quite like it. Yeah, the only thing, like I said earlier, that I really dislike is whoever sharpened this knife needs to be in a different part of the factory or needs to be retrained. So, oh, I didn't show you the balance point. That's right where I like it to be on a knife, right there. So, very good. And yeah, I carried this thing for several days and I cut a bunch of stuff with it. It's a decent knife. I give it a good recommend. I didn't tell you the close-ups. I like that on this side, there's very little writing and they put it all in the flats. It just says ABKT and then the model AB1026 T for TAN and then PRC, People's Republic of China. And then the big D2. So that's a good knife. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, cut towards your chum. Not your thumb. And yes, oh, that's just a little bit dirty. I was building uh, some more um, straps today, so I got some adhesive stuck on my thumb, and I just, that adhesive just doesn't want to come off. But the cut that I had over there a few days ago, totally gone. It's all better, better. Bye for now.